Hello, in this example, let us try to see how we can use EMWorks 2D to simulate two magnets. So let's go ahead and draw those two magnets out in SOLIDWORKS. So we're going to have one magnet which measures 3 centimeters by 1 centimeter. I'm going to go ahead and dimension them 3 centimeters. and one centimeter. And uh, as soon as we create the, the sketch, we can go ahead and create a surface and this is really the first magnet. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, create the second magnet. Somehow aligned with this. And this one also measures 3 centimeters by 1 centimeter. And for simplicity sake, let's just make them maybe 1 centimeters apart. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and um, create the second magnet. So here I have two magnets. They measure 3 centimeters by 1 centimeter and they are separated by a distance of 1 centimeter. Now before we do a simulation in EMWorks 2D, we need to create what is known as the air geometry. And why is this important? This is important because the magnetic flux is going to be present in the air as well and we need to capture that. So let us now create the air geometry. To do that, we would draw a sketch first in the front plane. So let me just spot a nice midpoint. And then I draw out a large enough air geometry. I'm also going to trace out the contours of the magnet so that the air can form a separate surface on its own. So let's go ahead and create a surface representing the air geometry. Now I have three surfaces, two of the magnets and one for the air geometry. Now we proceed to the steps involved in doing the simulation. Before we do the simulation, let me go ahead and save the model that was created. I'm going to save them as two magnets, example one. Okay. All the steps involved in the simulation are all organized in the EMWorks 2D Manager. So I go to the respective tab. Here I can create the first step which is definition of the study. Now before I do that, I have to go ahead and create what is called as the coordinate geometry. So let me insert a reference geometry, a coordinate system. Now I insert a coordinate system here um, in SOLIDWORKS which denotes my X and Y directions. Now I can proceed with creating a study. So I right click and then create a study. I select the magnetostatic study. I go to the XY planar solution type and I select the coordinate geometry that was selected. With this I create the study. Now I need to assign materials to the various components. So the surface plane 3 is air geometry. So I say apply materials and EMWorks comes with a default material library where I can select the material that I need. Now for both the magnets, I'm going to go ahead and apply a neodymium magnet. So I click the permanent magnet folder 
and then I select neodymium. If you want to look at the properties like the relative permeability, the coercivity, the remnants, etc., they are available for you to view them. Now, once we have selected the appropriate materials for the various surfaces that were created, now we have to go ahead and define the direction for each of these magnets. So let me do that by selecting the coercivity direction. Here I select the coordinate system and along the x-axis we would like the direction of the magnet to be. If you would like to see a preview, you can do that. By zooming in you can see the direction associated with the magnet. Now for the second magnet too, let's go ahead and do the same steps. I have to select a particular coordinate system and then again along the x-axis I show a preview maybe just make it slightly bigger and then say OK. So now if you look at the directions of both the magnets so the, let's assume that the tip of the arrow is the north and the tail is the south so they are magnets that are designed to attract each other. Now we would like to compute what is the force acting on say the second magnet. So we request the program to compute the force acting on the second magnet and we say OK. Now we are ready to solve this particular problem. Now solution consists of two separate steps. The first step is called meshing. So I can create a mesh and I can adjust the slider here to denote the size of the mesh I want. So finer means I have more mesh elements and coarser means I have less mesh elements. So let me go ahead and mesh the geometry and you can see here that EMWorks 2D automatically creates an optimal mesh and now I can go ahead and run the simulation. Now as soon as the solver is completed, we can take a look at the results. Now before we go to the results, let us think about the objectives of this particular problem. We wanted to measure the force acting on the second magnet. And to, to do that, I just double click on the results table where my force is organized. Now you can see that the force acting on my second magnet there's a minus sign which shows you that it is in the minus x direction and that's how you would expect because that's a attractive force pulling the second magnet towards the first one. And you can see the value of the force. It's a large force per unit thickness of the magnet that is what is being computed and it's a force of one of attraction. Okay. We can also look at the flux lines. So to be able to do that I right click on the magnetic vector potential and I change the plot format to contour lines and you can see the, the vector lines, the magnetic um, flux lines that are there in this particular case. Okay. One can also look at the magnetic flux density this is more of a contour plot of the magnetic flux density as well as the, um, the magnetic flux lines. So these are two important qu quantities apart from the force that you are looking at. Now for example, um, you would like to make these magnets ripple each other if you would like to change the direction of one of these magnets, how do we do that? So to be able to do that, you can actually create another study. You can even do better by cloning this particular study. So I can just copy the study and I can just paste it here. So I have a new study. I rename that as study 2. Now in study 2, the only thing that I would like to change is this direction of the second magnet. So I go ahead to the coercivity direction and I flip the direction of the second magnet. Now see that the two magnets um, 
are now aligned in such a way that they don't like to come close to each other. They ripple. So under this condition, let us understand how the flux distribution is and what is the force with which they ripple each other. So to do that, I just go ahead and run study 2. And we are ready to take a look at the results. So let's look at the magnetic vector potential here. You can see the flux lines, they don't cross from one magnet to the other as we saw in the previous example. Now here they just uh, deviate away from each other. And also you can take a look at the result table and the forces. Now the force is one of repulsion in the positive x direction. 